if you love technology as much as I do, you're really going to enjoy this week's episode. We're talking with Laura Kerbison, and we're talking about marketing automation. Now, if you have listened to this podcast over the last three years, you know that this is something that I use in multiple businesses that I have, but also I really enjoy it. It's so powerful. There's so many things that you can do with it. It makes my businesses more efficient, but there's also a cautionary tale as well because we have to respect our clients, make sure that that marketing automation is being used in the best way possible. We dive into so many Many things during this conversation. And if marketing automation is something that you've been interested in for your business, but are curious about it and haven't done it yet, this episode is definitely worth a listen. Today, we are thrilled to have with us a true powerhouse in the world of entrepreneurship. Miss Laura Kerbison, She's an accomplished entrepreneur, a speaker, author, and a mentor who's been making waves in the business world for over three decades. With a passion for real estate, hospitality, and technology, Laura has successfully launched multiple businesses and helped countless others achieve their goals. What sets Laura apart from others is her unwavering commitment to helping others achieve success. She believes that anyone can achieve their dreams regardless of their background or circumstances and has dedicated her career to mentoring and coaching others to help them reach their full potential. So without further ado, let's welcome Ms. Laura Kerbison to the show and learn about her incredible journey. Hey, how are you? Thank you, Jillian. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm excited. This is one of my favorite topics. And you know, I'm a total geek, so I can nerd out about marketing op- op- automation, I guess is probably the best way to say it. I can't even <laughs> talk. I'm so excited. <laughs> but let's talk about how marketing automation has helped you improve your business efforts and contribute to your overall business success. Okay, very good. Well, first thing I do is I help businesses grow their business. I spent, uh, t- for example, I spent two years with one company who launched its business by building out the email marketing automation platforms. We did social media marketing with chatbots, uh, SMS automation, uh, call centers, dialers, and the business was running marketing automation on every channel. That is like amazing. Like when you say all that, I'm like, if everything could run smoothly like that, I mean, think about the amount of hours that any entrepreneur that's out there listening would be like, oh my gosh, I could get that many hours back of my life, back in my business to get all that stuff done. That would be amazing. Now, I know there's probably some pitfalls that you guys ran into throughout that process. So what do you think are some common mistakes that businesses might make when they're trying to implement that marketing automation in their processes? And more importantly, how do they avoid those common mistakes? Well, I think the first mistake is that businesses simply aren't using automation. Uh, They're using email, but they aren't using persuasive email drip campaigns. Uh, They aren't really building relationships. I mean, they're they're doing SMS as uh, one-offs rather than as campaigns. And many businesses that need to get to the decision maker of the company, they aren't using LinkedIn automation marketing, which is actually done outside of the LinkedIn platform. And then it connects in. So... Another very common mistake is when they they send that first message, right? And then they try to sell you in the first message on LinkedIn. So annoying. Um, Yeah, they go straight to the pitch and then every time it's going to fail. So you can use the um, automation to establish the relationship and steps. And so in email drips, you don't want to put all your marketing points into one email, which is what a lot of businesses do. So you might take those potential customer pain points and you might break them out, say one per email. And uh, that's how you can help with that pain point. I think that's so great because you know what? It's kind of like how they talk about like when you're building that relationship with a potential future client that you don't ask them to marry you in the very first conversation. Like you have to date them a little bit. You got to kind of ease into it. I mean, we've all gotten those messages on LinkedIn where it's just like they people, I feel like I just got one the other day where it's like somebody vomited all their stuff out on me. And I was just like, (laughs) I'm overwhelmed by that. Even if I needed what you were selling, I'm totally overwhelmed by it. Yeah, exactly. I think that's one thing too that like probably prohibits a lot of people from using marketing automation. One, because I think as a whole, it can be super overwhelming. But what do you think are some ways that technology as well as automation can be used to enhance that customer service interaction, you know, sales, legion? I mean, that's like three huge things that we could probably spend hours talking about, just those three things. But what 
you know, how can those businesses balance the benefits and those tools with the need for people's personalized customer attention? Because that is so often what people are looking for nowadays. Yes. I mean, whether it's email or LinkedIn messaging drips, um, building out the workflows to create those drips and those actual messages are really, truly crucial. Uh, the drips need to be good at building the relationship and the trust. And they also need to be good at focusing on those pain points. And so we all know the chat bots that say, are there any questions I can answer for you? Can I help you? Mm -hmm. But I think a more progressive, innovative way of using a bot is when you attach the code to a Facebook advertising button. So you've got the ad, you've got the button, the users already clicked the opt-in, which is you know crucial. You can't run Facebook ads without the opt-in, which means they opt into your email, they opt into SMS, they opt into the phone call when you put that in your terms and agreements. So you, the user clicks the button, the bot launches, and then it's going to pre-qualify that customer because certain industries need to ask pre-qualifying questions for their product. So let's say, and let's just come up with a hypothetical here. Okay, if you're an accident attorney, like a basic question might be, have you ever been in an accident? Because if they say no, they're in the wrong place. So that button would then capture the email address and the phone number because the opt-in was checked by that potential customer. So then that phone number is going to be dumped into a dialer for a call to happen. And then the email is going to be dumped into the email flow that is going to send one email a week for 10 weeks. And so those are the kinds of things that drive sales. Um, so using technologies to establish relationships, basically, and how we balance the benefits is that when the bot has exhausted the capability to help the person, uh, that's when it's connected with the human and the human takes over. So you put the employees really on the monitoring side. So, you know, you might have 2000 conversations that occur with the bot in 24 hours, but let's say 25% are not qualified. 25% of those customers were not in an accident. So they're not your customer, right? So the bot allows you to have uh, your people focus on 75% that are qualified. So you can drive thousands of leads in short periods of time. Um, it does require investment, but that investment pays for itself. And this allows you to scale the business. And it's wise to run this kind of automation on both the customer service side and the sales side. Well, and I think it's important too to remember because it is an investment, but that's exactly what it is. Just like you're mm -hmm. in investing in an employee that would make those phone calls, you're investing in that automation to do it for you. And it probably creates even more opportunities because then you're kind of flushing out those, like you said, the person that doesn't has never been in a car accident, they're not going to be your client. So let's just move those folks out of the way so that way we can focus on the 75% of people that we do want to focus on. So what strategies have you found to be most effective when you're creating those opportunities? Well, um, let's see. Right now, let me give you an example here. I'm currently using a platform that was written to drive LinkedIn marketing because I'm trying to get to decision makers. Um, and that's really the strength of this is that LinkedIn is all about the business makers, the decision makers. Um, and basically how this runs is it connects to the LinkedIn platform from outside of LinkedIn. So I build out the flow of what the messaging is going to be and when to send the message based upon what happens. I start targeting a list of prospects for the product. And then I start the campaign. And then when I see that people are interested by the messages, then I step in and the automation stops. So we've used similar technologies to build out entire companies. Uh, but in some cases, those are going to be SMS, they're going to be email, they're going to be bot automation. You let the flow run until you need the human to step in. Well, and I love that at any point in that process, like you said, that a person can step in and say, hey, I'm here. What do you need? Because you're right. Automation, it's amazing. and It can do, I mean, the stuff that our team has come up with, I'm like, say what? Like, I've never even thought about it. I think that's why it's so important. If you're not doing anything with marketing automation yet, you definitely need to look into it because you could go super complicated. Like I like to call that ninja, or you could go super easy, whatever works for your business, wherever you're at in the process. But I really like the part that you said that like throughout that flow, there's metrics that you can track. You know, you're using that marketing automation to measure customer satisfaction. You know, where are people at in the process? You know, where do you need to step in? What feedback or 
maybe a better question is how do you use that feedback to improve your business when you're able to see all that information? Well, um, the analytics are everything. Uh, they drive how you optimize the campaigns, how you make them better, how you make them more effective. So for example, I'll give you an idea of like what we track and then where we're at right now, like on a particular campaign. So let me look at this real quick over in the corner. But um, right now I'm running a campaign where I'm tracking the leads. I'm tracking the total messages sent back to me. I'm tracking the views. I'm tracking the total leads followed, uh, the sent emails, the emails verified, the connection request, the sent in mails, uh, cause this happens to be a LinkedIn marketing campaign. I'm tracking the acceptance rate, um, which on the current campaign is running about 28% on the acceptance rate, which is very good. Uh, the response rate is a total of 11% and our open rate is a whopping 48%, which is fantastic. So I can look at the flow chart of the workflow. I can see that step two is gonna be to follow those LinkedIn accounts and that 488 accounts were followed in the past week. And then I can go to further email steps that are deployed. And I can see 75 emails were sent, uh, 36 were open, giving me a response rate of 48% on that part of the flow. So I invited 115 people to connect in the past week, uh, 32 accepted, giving me a response rate of 28%. So each step of the flow would continue to go on. So the software is going to be much faster and more powerful at achieving the goal than I could possibly do by myself. And that's really the power of automation. Well, and really even that tracking, like you're not requiring an employee to track all that stuff on a spreadsheet. Like you can literally pull it up and look at it anywhere in the process. And it probably allows you an opportunity to when you see like maybe there's a part where you're like, oh, people are getting stuck right here in mm -hmm. whichever section it is to be like, OK, we need to tweak that. We need to test that or maybe adjust it. I think that's the, the crazy cool thing about marketing automation is there's so much freedom in what you have to do and you can really customize it for whatever business you have, whatever type of business that you have. One thing too that I'm curious about is with all this marketing and automation that we do use, how can it enhance our, sale, our sales or the customer experience that would potentially build customer relationships? Because I feel like there's so much of that missing nowadays, or especially if you're in an industry that, you know, revolves around finance or something that those customer relationships are so important and you have to build those typically before you can sell a customer. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Well, yeah, I mean, you just brought up some really good points. I mean, for example, uh, let's say someone's at work, but they're interested in a mutual fund or something like that. If you are interacting with that chat bot, you know, they can do it with maybe on their lunch hour without uh, people knowing what they're doing because they want their privacy. And there are really actually entire markets and age groups that prefer to text. So by using the chat bot, they can text and ask the questions. They can maintain their privacy and they can get instant help where it's not possible to employ enough humans to answer those questions. Because I know that the one I, I started where I had 2000 conversations in the first 24 hours, there's no way I would have had enough people to answer that. Yeah, that is so amazing. So I know we've talked even about, so we're using marketing automation, which people think is a lot of like AI, we're creating those flows ahead of time. And I think a lot of people might not think that that's personalized service when in fact it really is. Yes. But because it is an investment in our business, in our employees, how do you manage those buzz budget constraints? And frankly, everything else that we have going on as business owners, there's so much pressure out there. What are ways that marketing automation can help us achieve that balance? Well, I think automation is very, very cost effective. Um, humans are really nice, but in order to handle volume, it's really an inefficient business plan to rely solely on humans. So I think that we've reached the realm in marketing and automation AI where humans just need to be the oversight and the ultimate judgment and no one to step in um, so that their, their leads are more high intention at the point at which that they're engaging with the customer. Uh, but it, it still requires a tremendous creativity because all the messaging had to be created in the case of emails, the messaging and the visuals. So you can't do it without the humans. It just makes the human job more interesting and more productive and engaging even for that person. Absolutely. And two, with marketing automation, it's probably evolving like social media or any other technology that's out there. It's probably changing all the time. So tell me what you're most excited about with the emerging trends and how do you see them impacting the future of customer service for our businesses? 
Well, there are reasons to be excited about the advancements in artificial intelligence, but at the same time, to be honest, there are reasons to be concerned as well. Uh, the field is at a really interesting place right now. Uh, it can be such a revenue maker for companies, but you can also see where new technologies can be dangerous. Um, this is a debate that's going on in the industry right now. And recently there was a letter um, that was signed by Elon Musk, uh, as well as other members of the tech community, including myself. And let me just pull up here for a second. I'll read you basically what it says. It says, advanced uh, AI could represent a profound change in the history of life on Earth and should be planned for and managed with commensurate care and resources, the letter says. Okay, so unfortunately, this level of planning and management is not happening, even though recent months have seen AI labs locked in an out-of-control race to develop and deploy even more powerful digital minds that no one, not even the creators, can understand, predict, or reliably control. So I signed the letter. Steve Wozniak, who was one of the co-founders of Apple, signed the letter, as did thousands of people in computer science. I think we have 25,000 signatures at the moment. And we're at the point with artificial intelligence where you know we say to ourselves, yes, we know we can do that, but should we do that? Um, so there's been no greater time to discuss ethics, I think, than now. And I think most of us in the field agree that it, it needs to be technology people to make these uh, recommendations and limitations. And technology companies cannot be run by people without tech backgrounds. I mean, it just, it never works when that happens. So the things that I execute on a marketing automation side, they are meant to provide benefit to both sides. I mean, I would never do it if both sides weren't benefiting, but the technologies in the wrong hands can be used to exploit people um, and to harm them. So that's the concern of the industry. But when you hear that one of the bots found a cure for a type of cancer that we didn't have, I mean, it's really hard to put the brakes on that. And it seems like a, a really good use of the technologies. But on the positive side, you know, these technologies can be used to reach, to interact, to engage, and to help people and customers in greater ways um, than human-only companies. So, you know, I think I was stunned um, when that first bot I wrote did uh, 2,000 conversations in 24 hours. And, uh, you know, that was the point at which I realized that this is how you learn how to scale a business and scale it quickly through automation. Um, you know, SMS is highly effective. Uh, but the FCC has just imposed new regulations on um, SMS. So, you know, this is a game that it, it changes constantly. And in marketing, we need to pivot. In business, we need to pivot. And we need to react to the changes that we have in society. But I think, you know, ultimately, my goal is to use these technologies to help businesses earn revenue, to be more efficient, and to match the right customers to the right people. Well, and... I mean, I feel like that's kind of like entrepreneurship in like sums it up because we have to be flexible. We have to be willing to, you know, pivot to make changes necessary. But at the same time, we need to remain extremely ethical because our customers depend on it. The, those relationships that we're creating with people, I mean, just like you said, I mean, there are lots of ways that businesses can abuse things that our customers use. And that's another reason, too, why we as business owners, we need to work with reputable people, people that share the same views as us of like, we want to respect our clients. You know, we want to make sure that we are doing the right thing for the right reasons. And I think that that is one reason why you have excelled so much is that ethics that you do have. And if people want to connect with you and they're like, hey, I want to geek out with you on this marketing automation. I want to find out more about it. What's going on? What's the best place for people to connect with you? Ah, well, they can find me at floridawebdevelopment.net or they can find me at lauracurbison.com, the Florida Web Development is .net, lauracurbison.com. And uh, we can hop on a call. We can do a demo. I can show some behind the scenes, uh, you know, any number of ways. My telephone is all, know, all over the internet as well with those websites. And they can always uh, email me at laura at floridawebdevelopment.net. I love that. And we'll be sure to link everything in the show notes. So if people are driving or running, you know, listening to this or watching this, they'll be able to have access to those show notes quick and easy. 
Thank you again for sharing all of this information with us. I feel like this marketing automation is such a massive thing. And if people are like, oh, I know I need to do that, but I'm so overwhelmed. I think even just having this short conversation that we did, you cleared up so many things for us. So I appreciate you being here with us today. Thank you so much, Jillian, for having me as a guest. And thank you to everyone who's listening. Best on scaling your business.